So the Stalingrad is a ship that I really don't play all that much anymore, and I think it really does come down to the fire prevention nerf where cruisers no longer have access to it. And it really hurts some of these super cruisers, right, where you have the long fire duration, but you don't have the ability to take any skills to deal with it like a battleship would be able to. So you're a lot more vulnerable, and you don't feel as tanky or as able to push or sustain damage as you used to. And that's just something I gotta get used to, but it's just really led to me not playing these ships all that much. Um, but fortunately, I was, uh, uh, had some channel points redeemed on my Twitch channel and somebody wanted me to play Stalingrad. So I got this game, actually. This is like the one game I've played in the last couple months of Stalingrad. And it's really kind of shown me that Stalingrad is still a really, 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 really good ship. Um, I've been kind of sleeping on this ship recently. I've kind of said that people shouldn't be getting it. People shouldn't uh, really be considering it over something like the Borgone. And I still think I believe that, especially given the uh, nerfs that are hitting this ship, right? Where you're getting a longer reload, your radar is not as good, and of course, that uh, previously mentioned fire prevention nerf. So it's not as good as it used to be. You know, if you see the old videos, right, of release Stalingrad, it is, it's not that ship anymore. But the guns are still really good, and it's still something that is very dangerous, especially late game. I think that's got to be the most difficult part, is getting to the late game. So um, we're kind of starting there because it was so boring. Um, the earlier part of this game, I didn't really think that would be all that interesting for YouTube. Uh, so I skipped over it, but you noticed, at least at the beginning of this video, we had around 28k damage, and then it went up to 34k, something like that around 10 minutes into the match. So pretty stale, pretty stale beginning. <laughs> and I think that's required, honestly, to actually get a good Stalingrad game. You need these close matches like this, and you need to get into that late game where there's not as many people focusing you, there's not as much firepower to just burn you out of a position, right? And that's what we got here. And I think it still means that the Stalingrad is incredibly strong. Playing on an island like this isn't all that recommended given there's a carrier in the game, but it can work as long as you're hugging the island appropriately to deal with the strikes, right? So something like the Immelman is a ship that is constantly wanting to get on your broadside. Playing against a ship like the Hakuryu, this wouldn't really work um, as the Daring comes out to try and torp us. I'm running Propulsion Mod, that's how we're gonna accelerate out of the way of these torps so quickly. Um, I'll go after over the build after the match, like I always do. But talking about playing on islands as a cruiser, the Immelman has torpedo bombers, it has skip bombers, and it has rockets. All of those want to hit your broadside. That's one of the limitations of something like the Immelman, where the Hakuryu has torps and rockets for your side and dive bombers to go bow in or stern in on you. So it's really difficult to play an island against a Hakuryu where you can't just negate the strikes on half of your ship, right? He'll just come in with the dive bombers and just sit at LU with AP bombs. But you can see the skip bombers are on the way and we got the island right next to us, so it's going to be very difficult for him to drop me against this kind of island. That's really the only reason the island play is kind of working here. Uh, it's just because of the limitation on the Immelman. Um, that's that's why I wouldn't recommend playing islands against a lot of the other carriers, just because the dive bombers usually would be able to come in and wreck you. <laughs> but you can see he's coming in at a weird angle, and our A is doing a decent job, but you can see he's not really getting the best strikes off on us, and that's what's really allowing us to play at such a strong position like this. The guns of the Stalingrad have always been its strong point, right? 305 millimeter guns with insane pen. I guess it's not that insane if you can see what Petro is able to pen, but pretty insane levels of pen, accuracy, and of course you get improved pen angles. So you're going to see that I often just shoot AP, because you're going to get good damage almost at any angle on this ship, um, or with this ship out of its AP. So switching to HE isn't always something I'm going to do, but against a battleship, especially one that's being struck by a carrier, uh, we can get some permanent fires potentially. It's not bad HE, it's just that the AP is so good that that's really what your bread and butter is. But you can see the HE doing a decent damage. I think we must have hit him on the stern there. 
and collecting a fire at the same time. Popping his damage control, you know, somebody getting struck by a carrier, using their damage control, you know, that's pretty much a death sentence. I did see this daring on the minimap, by the way. I wasn't just uh, shocked by this guy being here. Um, and he decided to single launch all these torps, so the good old slow down, turn in trick managed to juke those torpedoes. You definitely want to be playing with your um, propulsion and your rudder. It's one of the things that makes this ship reasonable at dodging, especially when you run prop mod. It gives you that really nice ability to um, it gives you that nice ability to dodge things as this daring gets a triple fire on us in that short amount of time. <laughs> oh, it's pretty nuts, huh? And of course, I mistime it so that my rear guns would uh, hit the island, and I used my damage con too early. And at that point, I was tilted, so I didn't even <laughs> zoom in and get the kill. <laughs> oh, it's a pretty horrible play by me, but we got enough HP to deal with the fire. But you can see how long it's going to last, even. I think it's a tough choice, though, for Propulsion Mod. I've been recommending it a lot in this video so far, but at the same time, fires hurt, and running damage control system can be useful against that. However, I think just playing a playstyle where you're not getting HE spammed all the time, where you're in a position to move away or get behind cover, is really just more beneficial and allowing you to take something like the prop mod, allowing you to dodge some of the more, I don't know, difficult to deal with alpha damage that can come in against this ship uh, is a little more useful, at least for the playstyle I like. You can definitely run the um, damage control system mod if you want to. The benefit, of course, of Stalingrad against cruisers is you're getting some decent overmatch against a lot of these light cruisers, and the improved pen angles just mean that any high DPM cruiser who wants to get all their guns shooting at you really can't. They just can't get all that DPM to bear because they're opening themselves up to get Citadel. That's what the improved pen angles do. That's why something like the Des Moines is so scary at close range and a little less scary at long range for those DPM cruisers uh, just because it's got poor dispersion and poor shell velocity. So it's a little more difficult to hit those shots on a ship that's trying to get all its guns off. But for a Stalingrad, it's a little different. And that's really the strength of this ship is fighting cruisers. It does really good damage against battleships as well. I'm not saying it doesn't, but against cruisers that are trying to angle, I mean, obviously broadsides it crushes, but trying to angle cruisers, yeah, this thing is disgusting. And we've pretty much pulled this game back. Um, a pretty interesting late game scenario in the Stalingrad. I had a lot of fun getting this match uh, uh, to a win. It wasn't looking like that at the beginning, or at least by the midpoint of the game. I really do enjoy these closer range matches, or closer matches. I think that uh, it's a shame that a lot of the matches these days are the ones that tend to end very quickly, or you know who's gonna win five, 10 minutes into them. Uh, but every once in a while, it is possible to get these really fun games that last this long and are this close, and your decisions matter. So I think the Stalingrad is a great ship. If you're thinking of picking up a steel ship, it's still really good. Honestly, it's probably the second or third ship I'd recommend, but really Borgone is just so good that it's hard not to just recommend that one straight up. This Minotaur likely torpedoed me. Um, I know this, but I really want this kill, so I'm just gonna get keep all my guns uh, on him because we don't have a kill yet, and it'd be nice to finish this game off with a nice little kill. So I probably should have turned in for the torpedoes as here come the indicators some well done single launches on me and he kills me but we killed him that's the good old overmatch and improved pen angles of this ap it's really 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 strong so that's the stalingrad game where we actually had a late game scenario and a close match so i hope you guys enjoyed watching this one and let me know if you've been playing your stalingrad recently i haven't really this, like i said this is really the only one that I've played in the last couple months. So for this commander on the Stalingrad, it really is my cruiser, my premium Russian cruiser commander. So I'm using Kuznetsov and trying to get it usable on a lot of ships. So I'm running Concealment, I'm running Superintendent, and I'm running Gunfeeder and Grease the Gears. I think those are good for Stalingrad, as well as Adrenaline Rush. I think that some of these other ones 
can be good. You can see how the AA was at least holding up when we had defensive fire going against the uh, Immelman there, but maybe I would choose to take something like heavy AP instead of some of these other skills. But this allows me to run this build on a lot of different ships. I can run it on the Swalansk, I can start to run it on some lower tier ships like uh, Kutuzov, different ships like that, where it's just kind of a catch-all cruiser premium build. And since I'm usually playing, um, if I'm going to play a premium Russian cruiser, it's actually been Moskva a lot recently, but Stalingrad as well. I don't tend to play the Smolensk. I don't, I know it's a disgustingly good ship, but it, I just don't like the play style of it. Um, so, you know, just not gonna play it as much as something like the Stalingrad, where I can get those big hits in that I enjoy getting. And you probably noticed range mod, and it's not necessary. Um, you probably want to be going reload on a ship like this, but I just find, or at least when I was going into this game that was uh, a Twitch channel points redemption, I was thinking, how do I have a good game in Stalingrad without just feeling useless for half the game? Which I ended up being useless for half the game. <laughs> but anyways, I thought that running range mod would allow me to get those cross shots a little easier allow me to play a little further back, a little safer, so I didn't lose all of my HP at the start. That's really what it came down to. Um, but if you're good at getting into strong positions and living, or maybe you got some div mates to help you out, reload mod is definitely the way to go. I just was using this so that it would be easier for me. That's, that's really what it came down to. It's a bit of a cop out, I'm sorry. <laughs> concealment system definitely needed as full concealment build still is 14.2 kilometers. You're no Petro, that's for sure. And you can see the prop mod here. I think damage control definitely has a case now that the IFHE change, or sorry, the um, fire prevention change, not IFHE change, the fire prevention change is in, maybe to help control those fires a little bit. If you'd find yourself dying to fires a lot, definitely run this. If you're not dying to fires and it's more the damage that's incoming, try prop mod and try just wiggling back and forth and playing with your speed. You, you can be surprised how well you're able to dodge a lot of incoming salvos. We're also running surveillance radar mod, so we're getting up to 24 seconds. Is that right? That is very short. <laughs> I guess that's the nerf, right? Um, yeah, this used to, this definitely used to be a 36 second, I believe. Yeah, so big nerf on the radar time. And of course, main armaments mod one, because these turrets can break, so we want to keep them alive as much as possible. So that's the Stalingrad. Definitely a solid ship still. Not the beast that uh, we all knew it as when it came out, but the game's changed. And uh, this ship's been nerfed probably into a more balanced state, if I'm being honest. Uh, still a good ship to get for steel, but not my number one recommendation. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have a great rest of your day.